Hello everyone, today's topic, why are the SO2 emissions from my tail gas unit going through the roof? Welcome to the Experts Network. plus year veteran of sulfur recovery, principal engineer with Sulfur Experts. Today's topic is one that I've been dealing with constantly over the last three or four weeks from multiple clients. Their emissions from their tail gas unit running along at normal values and all of a sudden they've gone through the roof above their allowable limit. They want to know what the basic troubleshooting steps are in that case. So first of all, and this is everybody's dream, it's an analyzer problem. Every one of you measure your emissions with some type of SEMS, Continuous Emission Monitoring System. That tells you the concentration of your emissions, perhaps the mass emission value, how many pounds or kilograms are going up there. You've got a limit. The SEMS tells you you're above it. Maybe it is a SEMS problem. Maybe the analyzer has died if it went straight off the roof without any other explanation. Sure, get your analyzer person out there to take a look at it. It's usually not that simple, however. Usually those emissions are real. Let's dive a little bit deeper into what causes those. The first thing we tell everybody, if the emissions from your tail gas unit have gone up, there are three different pathways that can cause that. The first thing most people do is go circulate more amine in their tail gas unit. That's only one of the three areas that could be causing a problem. So the three areas are, first of all, yes, it could be poor operation of the amine system and higher H2S coming out of the TGU amine absorber. The second thing, however, it could be COS and CS2 or other sulfur species breaking through from the TGU reactor and the amine system doesn't touch those components. The third and final thing could be that your tail gas unit, your TGU, is working perfectly, but some other source of sulfur is coming in downstream of that and adding to your overall emissions. Let's start with that third one first. If everything else looks good but your emissions are still high, could it be something else going into the incinerator, the thermal oxidizer? Many of you process sulfur pit, sulfur storage tank, sulfur loading tank vapors in the incinerator. Is there a reason those have gone up? There's many reasons. There could be a fire burning sulfur to SO2. That's going to your incinerator. You could have blown a seal leg in your sulfur plant, letting processed gas into the pit, being swept off to the incinerator. We've even seen inductor systems pulling liquid sulfur out of the pit and off to the incinerator. Other sources of SO2 emissions downstream of the tail gas unit could be flash tank vapors, refinery fuel gas, leaking bypass lines. Have you got a bypass line around the tail gas unit and that valve is imperfectly closed? So any one of those could be the cause of your emissions. You simply have to walk through Try to block every one of those sources in and see if that helps you. So that's one way, maybe simple, close a valve, block something in, the emissions drop off. The second way that your emissions could be higher could be that your tail gas catalyst is not working properly. Because I know you love chemistry, we're going to throw up the reactions that happen in that TGU tail gas unit catalyst. It's supposed to convert all of the sulfur species to H2S so the amine system can pick it up. If those reactions don't go to equilibrium, instead of a few parts per million of leftover COS, CS2, things like that, you could have very elevated levels. 
And remember that TGU amine does not pick those components up. It doesn't grab COS, CS2, mercaptans, any of those things. So if the TGU reactor catalyst is no good, it's letting higher compositions of those components through. Nothing you do in the TGU amine system is going to help you. How do you know if it's the reactor? You need to take some samples. There's an example of somebody, a sample downstream of the reactor. The H2S content is actually quite good off of the TGU absorber, but the COS instead of one or two ppm is in the hundreds. That's their emission source. Plus there's CS2, mercaptans, all of those adding to their emissions. So that's the second thing you need to look at is the TGU catalyst active. The third one, the thing that most people consider first, but may not be the problem, is the TGU amine system itself. A good amine system is going to bring the H2S down into the tens of ppms or even less. If that's not working for some reason, if you don't have the right temperatures, if you're not regenerating the amine properly, other reasons, the H2S off the top of the absorber could be climbing. Again, how do you know if it's COS from the reactor? How do you know if it's H2S from the absorber? How do you know if it's something downstream? Grabbing samples can help. Here's an example of a plant where everything looked good in the TGU absorber, but the emissions off the top, over a thousand ppm of H2S, not the tens or single digits like it should have been. We're not going to go into troubleshooting the TGU amine system. That will be a topic for different videos, but just knowing which of those three paths is actually causing your emissions is the starting point to troubleshooting. So quick summary, anytime your emissions go up, is it H2S from the top of the amine absorber? Is it COS, CS2, mercaptans, other sulfurs breaking through the TGU reactor? Or is it not a problem with the TGU at all? and it's a leaking bypass line, sulfur pit vapors, something else that's coming in downstream of the TGU and adding to your emissions. I hope that gives you a little bit of background for future troubleshooting. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel. Any questions on this or other videos, please send them to us. Be happy to answer those. Remember, ring that bell, and we hope to see you again in future videos.